The State of Real Estate with your host, Jerry Lantain. Indeed, that is me, and welcome back to the show. On today's episode, we are going to have... Um, we're going to be being with Mr. Chad Schoppel again. Uh, the interview we did last week was quite extensive and there's a lot of information on heating. So we are going to continue that today. Uh, but first, the market report. And today's uh, market report will be comparing stats from October uh, 2020 to October 21. And they are brought to you by the Lakeland Association of Realtors. Starting off, the average price. The average price is up by 4.8% from the same time last year. Interesting to note though, that is about the average increase in Muskoka on a yearly basis over the past 10, 15 years. However, the average sale price increased by 52% since 2018. And again, that is that whole COVID dri driven uh, uh, crush that we're under. So. New listings in Muskoka are down by 11.4% this month over last October. And the overall inventory of homes for sale is also down, and that is down by 20% uh, over this time last year. So there's less homes on the market this year than last year at this time. And actual sales are down by 32.2% from last October. And that's an interesting number, um, and I'll relay that in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, houses that are selling, uh, the percentage of original uh, price, they are getting 4% over their average asking price on average. Uh, days on the market is down by 13.6%. Last October, it took 22 days to sell a house. This October, it's only taking 19 days to sell a house on average. So with new listings and homes for sale being so low, it remains a seller's market. However, with the sales down from last October to this October by 32%, it shows that the buying frenzy is cooling down. And that might be because winter is coming and setting, settling in and or Christmas is just around the corner um, and leaving people with less time on their hands to do stuff. So that being said, it's actually a pretty good time to start looking to buy property. And this winter should be a better advantage for you with less competition out there. That's the market report. We'll be back with Mr. Shoppel soon. The State of Real Estate with your host, Jerry Lantain. So, the tip of the week this week, this is a monthly show though, <laughs> the tip is really take care of your heat source uh, maintenance. If you are having uh, an HVAC system, you want to maintain that as well. You know, your forced air furnace could be as simple as just changing the filters every three months. Um, other equipment becomes more complicated. but it is an investment. Your heat source is an investment in your home and you need to protect that investment by doing simple maintenance on a yearly or tri-monthly basis. That's the tip of the week and that's the state of real estate. So, okay, so that was for, for buyers basically, you know, uh, looking at homes that have deficient or, you know, not up to date uh, systems. Now, what if we were gonna sell a home and we have either an outdated, uh, or, you know, in poor condition uh, furnace system mm -hmm. and uh, we want to improve it before selling the house because we don't want to have that issue of people going, oh, we got to replace the furnace. And mm -hmm. um, so at that point, money wise, mm -hmm. we're just going to replace the furnace or can, do we have options at that point? Like, I mean, if it was an oil forced air furnace, would you consider removing the oil and going with propane uh... or does it matter? That's the problem. People usually relate efficiency to economics and the two don't relate. So if you want the most efficient furnace, it's always straight electric because, you know, uh, atomic vibrations of molecules create heat. So, um, you know, that's with like wires. If, if they run a lot of current through them, they're going to heat up because that's resistance. And that's what happens. It's, it's, it dissipates that energy flow as heat. So electric hot water tanks, electric furnaces, anything straight electric is 100% is efficient. An electric heater is literally the most efficient, probably, device on the planet because it's shock me. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> wow. So, but because hydro is expensive, yeah, it doesn't look so great because if you look at uh, oil and gas industry, they've sub been subsidized well to keep the prices low and make it affordable for people to burn uh, oil and gas. Wow. So, because they're commodities, though, 
you, today propane could be 40 cents a liter yes and in a week from now it could be 80 or a dollar 20 we, sure. we had that five six years ago it got up to something that was a really wet year in the mid us and they use it to dry their corn and they ate up all the propane stock and then we didn't get any and it went up to like a buck 30 a liter or something so right. that's the problem there's all the dirty economics that can really play on on those prices worth it and I know it's a bad word saying Ontario Hydro sometime, but they're actually <laughs> probably one of the better companies these days for energy because they, they keep electricity flowing to our homes out of I, what I think is a very reasonable rate when you look at the cost of some of the other things. And part of this is all on purpose. It is as we roll into the electrification of things. Yeah. That, but that, those are the conversations I'm getting off topic. We can have another episode based on all that. Now, yes. that reminds me though, um, if you're running electric, uh, boy, we have blackouts sometimes. So, Either you're going to need a generator a or stove. a backup. Yeah, a wood <laughs> yeah, stove. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Stove. Yeah. Yeah, and gas fireplaces, have, a lot of people have leaned on those as well. If they are, you know, maybe at the age they don't want to burn wood, uh, you know, you can get gas fireplaces, but they're really not efficient. They are more deemed as aesthetic uh, sure. appliances. They're not really meant as a, an actual heating they're device. They're decorations, really. They're more decorations. So okay. the, yeah, there isn't, that's the thing. It takes a lot of energy to make heat no matter what you're using. So when the power goes out, it's that's a that's a tough one uh, on an, any scale. So wood would be what you'd lean on the, the okay. most there. But as a homeowner buying a house that is older, typically, traditionally, an older furnace you'd get twenty to twenty five years out of you. You have one of those good old furnaces yes. that keeps on trucking. Yeah. Um, new furnaces, as things are made to look a little nicer and maybe not last as long these days, 15 to 20 years, you could probably expect to get out of well, a, there's And more so, I shouldn't say they're not made that, I didn't mean they're not made that well, but they have more parts in them because they're more right. advanced, there's more technology. So that's interesting people, then, that's a, good, go that's a good note for home buyers is to really take a good look at the age of the furnace because mm -hmm. if it's 10, 12 years old, you can kind of count on buying a new furnace in the next four or five years, is that right? Yep, yep. Okay. And the more complicated, you, if the system looks complicated, it probably is. Okay. And complica complicated systems are more expensive. They're more expensive to install up front, a lot more expensive to service over their life. And typically, the more complicated they are, the shorter their life cycle is. So okay. more expensive, more expensive, more expensive. All right. So speaking. Sorry, right. one, one, yeah. one quick thing to kind of sum it up. Simple is good in my trade life. With learning on the learning curve, you know, you kind of buy into a lot of... Uh, uh product sales literature, and, and you yeah. think oh this thing sounds great because they sing you the moon and i installed for uh 10 12 years and after a while i'm like gee i'm doing 10 percent of this guy's research putting this product in <laughs> and i'm looking like the bad guy in front of the homeowner because it's not working how it was supposed to or it's it's got the short fall yeah and after a while it's it's almost a little bit of moral in my opinion that stuff because there was a lot of times where you know, a furnace is a year old and something catastrophically failed and maybe the warranty wow. didn't work out. Sorry, homeowner, you got to pay a thousand dollars to fix this. And do you think that makes me look good as a heating contractor? Sure, they get mad at, at you, not the not the, but the company. The company's the one that, yeah. yeah, and but nobody ever sees them, right? Speaking so of which, this is a good one. point because this is leading up to my next question, uh, uh, question which, um, you know, I was going to talk about the cost of these things. How do you protect your investment on on your heating equipment yeah so that question i'd usually answer and relate it to auto an automobile it's like getting the oil changed on your car if you change your oil when you're supposed to you'll never have a these days a uh, internal combustion engine is going to outlast everything on your car if you change oil on it and just you know treat it well so with a with a furnace system uh really simple maintenance these days because all the electrical parts are pretty much hermetically sealed so they either work or they don't there's a few little things that can be done to keep them working nice and that sort of thing but there isn't a lot um changing your filter your furnace filter is about 90 percent of your annual maintenance that you can do as a homeowner uh usually the best thing i'd recommend to people for that because it is so important and it's an easy thing to do to change your furnace filter yeah. talk to your hvac contractor if you have a service contractor or you can take it upon yourself to go onto amazon or go into home depot but buy yourself a box of filters and they usually come in a 10 or 12 pack for a standard one inch filter um and then you have that in your mechanical room right beside your furnace because i know as a homeowner that doesn't know anything about hvac you either wait till the furnace doesn't work because the filter got so dirty or you're like oh geez that's part of my fall maintenance i'm supposed to do shoot you go down take the filter out oh that's dirty oh i don't have one i'll get one next week when i'm out in town at home depot and then you forget and life goes on and then this furnace poor furnace is running with this 
filter that should have been changed way long ago. So oh, oh. buying in bulk, I mm -hmm. think, is a really good idea just because of the human it's nature there. problem. Yeah, yeah you I usually buy at least three. Yeah. Um, how often uh, do you need to change that? Totally lifestyle dependent. So I've seen a lot of, you know, being in the trade for a long time, going to all humans' homes. Some people live really well and keep their house really clean. Some people do not do that. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a lot of pets, a lot more hair, kids, they're going to a, a house painter, hair. you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you should really base it on your lifestyle. But worst case scenario, if you want to be extremely proactive, but there's a balance of, uh, of, of uh, protecting the equipment, doing what's right, and then kind of being wasteful. So if you're changing them too often, you're throwing away something that probably isn't, didn't need to be changed. So I'd recommend with a one inch filter uh, through every three to six months. So you okay. wanna you wanna change your furnace filter. And it depends if you have air conditioning too. If you don't have air conditioning, your furnace sits off all summer and you're only using the winter. If you have air conditioning, you're using your furnace year round. Okay. So obviously you're gonna, there's gonna be more change intervals. So if you had furnace with air conditioner, probably four times a year. Yeah. If you're just using your furnace, probably spring and fall, yeah. kind of change it a couple times a year. Yeah, because I, I, I put my new filters in just like you said, it's fall time. So I changed yeah, the filter yeah. out and I wrote down in my day book, January 1st, put a new filter in Perfect. three months. Yep. So yep. good. Yep. Okay, yep. I'll do that again. Yep. Now, uh, oh, sorry, one quick thing yep. too, as, as a homeowner, <clears throat> if you are going to upgrade or put a new furnace in, there's four inch pleated media filters and they're not that much, they're not very expensive. The filters are probably 30 or 30 to $60 uh they last for a year and they have a giant surface area so they collect a lot more dirt them. and yeah. they allow a lot more airflow through okay. those are two really important things a lot of talk right now with the covid stuff and the, yeah. the merv 13 these high merv rating filters the way they get a really high particle entrapment rating is that they're very restrictive so sure. they catch a lot of crap but they don't let a lot, a lot of, of airflow air through and your airflow need your your furnace needs the airflow so people i've noticed with this covid they want these really high-end air filters. They don't realize the pr other problem they're creating. Sure. And, and it literally can overheat your furnace and lead to the degradation of your furnace if you slow the airflow down. So the better filter you use, the more often you have to change it. And typically the best filter, it's uh, about a MERV 8 to 10. So somewhere... And MERV is... MERV is a, is a particulate capture rating system okay. that the industry uses. And some filters you won't even see it on. Yeah, like MERV 13 is what they've recommended for... Um, um the coat for for covid anything higher uh merv 16s you'd be in hospitals that that kind of stuff right so you don't need to go too crazy um but yeah so there's different kinds of filters when you go to the hardware store there's 3m with the really dense pleats those are really good filters but you mm -hmm. got to change them a lot and they're the most expensive filters so you could kind of go broke changing those yeah. filters all the time uh um a, a pleated filter middle of the road filter one that the pleats are about as wide as your finger that's the best and okay. uh, disposable pleated filter is the best filter you can yearly maintenance on a forced air furnace is it necessary um different people will tell you yes and i'd say no and the reality of it is what we just talked about hermetically sealed parts they work or they don't for the most part we're gonna have to take a short break the state of real estate with your host jerry lantain Propane is a dirtier fuel to burn than natural gas with combustion because we live in, the, in a part of the world where we, a lot, most people are on propane. It is a dirtier fuel. So you will start to get combustion problems after four to five years on a lot of burner assemblies if they've never been cleaned. Mm -hmm. So definitely not every year, I think is safe to say. Every two to three years, maybe every three years okay. is, is being probably good, good and proactive. If so you having, leave so, it so five having, years or longer, yeah. you're going to have a failure and then you're going to have to call somebody in to fix right. something. So yeah. having a, a yearly maintenance contract with a maintenance provider is unnecessary, really? For forced, forced, air. forced air. So boilers. I was just, go yeah, ahead. A whole different story. So this is the thing. Boilers are, they kind of Boilers are used for the radiant heat. Typically, if you have a boiler with radiant heat system, your boiler is also more than likely, not always, it's going to be producing your domestic hot water as well, whether it's a, right. it's yes. called a combination boiler. Yep. So if you just have one boiler on your wall and you have heating and there's no tanks, your boiler is probably a combination boiler and now it's that, also instantaneously that, doing your domestic hot water. That's on de is that on demand? Or that's is that on totally demand. different? Uh, there's a lot of different terminology. It's, there's on, 
there's on-demand domestic hot water boilers that yep. only do that. Yeah. And then there's combination boilers the that combi. make heating and that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So there and there's yeah there's there's a few different types. So and those do have to be maintained every year. Is that right? Yeah. And the problem is a homeowner there's no filters or anything you can change because it's a it's a hermetically sealed system with treated water and maybe glycol and some corrosion inhibitor kind of nasty stuff. Uh, if everything's sealed, which it should be, no problems. Um, in order for the heat exchange process in a boiler, because you have, uh, you know, you've got to have this crazy burner that has to take all this heat and it somehow has to get into the water right away as the water's going through. Right. So they're fairly restrictive heat exchangers. They have to kind of, if you think of like a volume of water, they kind of have to spread that water really thin to grab that to heat burn and then pool back yeah. to go yeah. deliver that heat. So when you do that, minerals come out of the water typically the hvac guy or your boiler guy or plumber who put the boiler in they're supposed to test the water and treat it that doesn't always happen yep. um so because of that though water is the universal solvent it wants to eat everything away in time you know boilers water gets treated to try and slow that stuff down but it is gonna it's gonna start to gum up there's gonna be stuff in the water that's gonna settle out when you get into the heat exchange where it's yep. really high temperature so uh the manufacturers typically do recommend uh, boiler flush or cleaning. Again, you don't have to do it every year. They usually do recommend to do it every year, um, but every you know two to three years to have the boiler internally flushed, and that's fairly major. That's a whole pump contraption wow. your service guy has has to hook it up, flush it out. Uh, it's a fair, fairly time consuming, and then repurge the air out and mm -hmm. letting air into a hydronic system is the worst thing that you could do so sure. servicing them actually can let a little more oxygen in which isn't helpful but it's one of those things the heat exchanger on boilers a lot of carbonic acid will build up in the heat exchangers and some of the designs of them it'll actually plug the the heat exchanger openings where the like the baffles where the flame goes through yeah. and the water is so that carbonic acid is extraordinarily um corrosive corrosive okay so that starts to build up and if you don't get that out of there you hear of uh boilers lasting five or six years or oh. you know eight ten years they probably never got cleaned and that acid finally just corroded right through and a lot of people might think oh i have a stainless steel heat exchanger that's what they all are they can't tool pure stainless steel into the shapes they need to make these heat exchangers so they're mixed with steel so they call them stainless steel but they're they'll, they'll actually pinhole where the steel is right. over time with that corrosion so it's very rare to get a heat exchanger that totally like rusts right apart into a big hole. Yeah. It'll just pinhole. And then once you got okay. a leak, it's done and that's it. There's no way to brand new one. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm not a big fan of boilers just because of okay. all that stuff, because yep. they're more labor intensive. They're only really designed to last 10 years. You can get uh, 15 to 20 out of a forest air system. Is the so cost similar? No boilers are more expensive. Uh, there's more little pieces to a hydronic system because there's pumps and separators and all the plumbing fittings and mm -hmm. uh, a lot more labor to put them in usually. Um, so they typically are uh, 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 probably, I, I'm just going to throw an average, maybe 20 to 30% more expensive than the yep. forest air equivalent. And then one last question. I think we have time for one more. I'm not sure where we are, but uh, what do you think about the combination wood oil or, or wood propane type stoves? Is it always wood oil or is it sometimes propane? You, there's some manufacturers that you can get wood wood propane for. But it's a forced can, air wood. It's a for it's literally two. So they're just taking a wood furnace and a oil or propane furnace put and back to back. They twin them together, so it takes up quite a bit of room. Yep. Not a lot of people seem to have those, and there aren't a lot of them out there. Um, yeah, my dad had an old wood oil one. That combination I actually replaced it for him at one point because he had an old old one, and I. Uh, but yeah, that that was the only job I ever did like that. Yeah, so, it's funny. Yeah, it's not, I, not that common. I had a client that uh, had one um, when when they they bought their home and they recently sold it, and he was going on how they never used the oil because the wood was so efficient, mm -hmm. um, and the forced air system worked. Now, when when you got wood burning in a forced air system, what is that? What is it? A, a separate ventilation system? same idea so the the heat exchanger or the firebox that you put the wood into it's basically the heat exchanger and the air from a blower blows the air okay. around so the box it's simply a fan. The heat. yeah so it's okay. just a it's just a bigger heat exchanger again with uh natural gas and oil and stuff mm -hmm. more energy in a smaller amount so we can make the heat exchanger small winter maintenance if you have an hrv system yeah so hrv so like i said before uh hrv system is probably the most um 
service intensive mechanical device in your house which you mean you better be servicing that yeah okay. i've seen actually all the hrv stuff i've ever done on existing homes nine out of ten times they were plugged solid with dirt and the problem is is that everything still works so as a homeowner you push your button and the light comes on and you hear it make a noise oh it's working you open the door and it's uh smurf village in there and it's everything's plugged up and not working so right. They're very easy to service, though, for that reason, because they're designed to be cleaned because they get dirty. So the simplest thing is a homeowner, and most HRVs are really similar. So they're going to have a front door. They're going to either usually have two clasps, whether they're metal or plastic, that you unlatch. Some of them have screw two screws you got to take out. The whole front of the HRV will lift off as the door. Mm -hmm. You'll see the heat exchanger core. Usually there'll be two filters in there somewhere. They're foam reusable, cleanable filters. They don't, they don't put it to you that way where you got to buy brand new filters every time. So you want to take those filters out, take them to your kitchen sink, some nice warm soapy water and kind of sponge them until they're clean, take them outside and give them a good shake. Uh, you can put them back in a little bit wet because the one filter will be in the, uh, part of the HRV that's designed to get wet and drain condensate. So they don't have to be totally dry. Um, obviously when you open the door, take the filters out give the HRV a a visual inspection on the inside. There's going to be a lot of bugs and it's going to be really dirty in areas. Yep. So (laughs) vacuum it out, then wipe it out. And that's all a service technician is going to do. If it's plugged solid, you can also pull the core out. So if if you've neglected it and found your filters are just matted solid and everything's really dirty, you can plug the heat exchange core out and you flush that with uh, low pressure, high volume water. Okay. Um, and 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 give it a good shake and uh, put everything back in and away you go. If it if it is really bad, sometimes the fan motors. There's two fan motors that are responsible to move the airflow through it. They'll actually impinge up with dirt and actually will again sound like it's working. Once those curves of the fan blade uh, build up with dirt, they can't they can't push any more air. Right. So the the efficiency and the volume of air drops right off. And again, you might not notice that. Yeah. So if you have any, and if they get, I've seen HRVs that have got so dirty and so neglected, you just have to put new HRV in because it's beyond the point right. of cleaning. So that's the HRV itself. Uh, on the bottom of all HRVs, you're going to see one or two clear drain tubes that come off and go to a, a floor drain. That's to remove remove the condensate. That'll gung up with sludge and algae and stuff too. So you do literally want to pull both of those off and plug the holes and blow them out if you don't mind doing that. Or uh, pull the tube right out. They're pretty easy to take off. Again, take it to your garden hose, flush that tube out. If, if, if it's really dirty, it's such usually a small amount of tube, four or five feet. You can go to Home Hardware or something and uh, for $4, sure. you can put a brand new tube on if you're, if you're handy that way. Well, perfect. So okay. that's really easy. And then the last main thing with an HRV, You'll notice there's four duct connections to your HRV. Usually two are uh, some type of insulated flex, whether it's a black vapor barrier flex or silver now. Flex pipe, that flex is. Pipe. And then there's rigid metal pipe going off the other two connections. Those are your, the metal pipe is your indoor side and the flexible insulated stuff is your outdoor side. So you want to see where those two out, uh, outdoor side flex pipes go. And on the outside of your house, you should see right around the floor level of your main floor, you'll see two typically white hoods about six feet apart um, with with louvers on them. And those are the intake and the exhaust for the HRV okay. system. So that's what's that's literally the inhale and exhale for your house f- yeah. for your central ventilation system. So the one that blows air out of the house is taking clean air from your house and blowing it outside, never gets dirty. The intake, whole different story. Yeah. So both of those should have a quarter inch bug mesh on them and that's code and also so you don't have mice and stuff getting in. Wasps can get in them. I've actually had three wasp nests in my HRV intake over the years that I've had wow. to clean out. And that's just one of those things. If you get a musty smell in your house, uh, that's something to check for. It's probably a, a, a wasp nest in, in the piping. So that's a bit of a pain. So those hoods are made to pop off. Typically the screen will fall out and if three to five years if you never clean that if you've ever seen a your your dryer uh exhaust yeah. hood how it starts to plug up with lint it'll be matted solid right and no air is getting in okay. so then again you, everything sounds fine you hear it working it's only half working and not doing what it was intended to do so that outdoor intake screen or hood is really important to put on your uh maintenance list when you're cleaning the filters Perfect. as well so yeah so basically the internal filters give it a wipe out inside clean the core every five or six years if you're proactive with the filters if it's really dirty clean the core as well 
blow out the lines, the lines yeah. to make sure all the crap's out of there and check your exterior intake hood and clean that filter that's on that. And simple as that. And actually, once you get to do it one or two times, maybe takes right. you 15 minutes. And doing all minutes. this stuff will protect your investment in your heat systems in your house and keep that value there. And the most important thing is it is maintain good indoor air quality, which is really the name of the game. And that's the, the really the right. most Second, important. Secondary, to, to, secondary to, 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 to the value of the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that keeps the value in your house when, right. you, uh, when you've got good clean air going through. Well, Chad, thank you very, very much. You've been an excellent this guest. It's been great, Jerry, really appreciate it. And we will have you back in the future to talk about uh, that subject you were saying. What did you call it? The electrification of things. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. dun. <laughs> <laughs> And the carbon tax and how to yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that might be the future, but that <laughs> yeah. will be a future episode of the State of Real Estate. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. The State of Real Estate with your host, Jerry Lantane.